last one, we used the full contact API a little bit to grab pictures of this specific user. Um, in this one, I'm gonna actually add this to our Django project of MVP landing. Um, that's gonna be this project right here. Um, if you haven't done this, that's okay. If you've done other Django projects, you can still use this. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna use the built-in signals from Django registration to send an email eventually um, once they activate their account and that email is gonna contain their full contact data. I'm not gonna store anything, I'm just gonna email a few things here um, just so you can kind of see it in action. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to actually put registration into our installed apps. Now this of course means that you did pip install Django dash registration and it's going to download Django registration. So um, oh, there's a little spelling error there. So make sure that you spell everything correctly. Django dash registration. It's going to install it in there. And then we do python manage.py sync db because I already put it into installed apps and it synced it and now registrations there. Okay, so now we look at the quick start guide for Django registration. Um, we already did the installed apps. We can add account activation days. So this basically means that um, if the person does not activate their account within seven days, it's gonna say uh, that the key that they have is no longer valid. Um, so once we do that, and then we're gonna do accounts URLs, and we can go into URLs here and we're gonna add this in here. So now that we have accounts, we have our registration URLs, we can go back into MVP landing and let's make sure the server is running. And we can go into accounts like dot slash login. And then we're gonna get this template does not exist. So we can download templates that are already made um, here's the link. I'll make sure that these links are, are readily available. Uh, but then you can download this zip file here. And what you should see after it downloads is something like this after you unzip it. It has all of the template files that we would need for Django registration. So the next step, of course, would be to add um, this into our project. So into statics and then templates. Um, you can just drag this registration on over. And now that we have that in there, we can go back and refresh in our project. And we have this login stuff. I'm not gonna go through all the customization for this because this is about the full contact API. So now that we have this, there is one thing I do wanna note is there's a signal that is sent every time a user actually activates. So when they activate their account, there's a signal, which means it's kind of like, you know, if if every time you walked into the front door, uh, a, a ding went off or something like that, that's a signal signaling that you did that. Um, this is very similar for a registration signal. So when somebody clicks on the activation link that their email sends, you've probably already done this, we wanna do something when that happens. That's something we're gonna do is we're gonna actually send some of this full contact data to ourselves so we can kind of know about our person. Um, and this could also mean that, hey, maybe we wanna follow them and see what they're doing or whatever. Um, so this now we're gonna use this signal. So this is another kind of important aspect of what this is all about. So now I'm gonna add a new file. I'm just gonna put it inside of MVP landing and I'm gonna call it fullcontact.py. Um, I don't know how often you would actually call it this, but for the case of example, I'm gonna put it in full contact. More than likely, you would put this in one of your apps that would kind of handle storing the data, but I'm gonna call it full contact. So the old full contact one, I'm actually gonna copy this whole thing and bring it over to this new one inside of my Django project and just make sure that you get it all. And now we want to import a few things from Django. First off, we're gonna do from Django.core.mail import send mail. This is how we can actually send mail from our Django project, so send email. And this is all based off of 
the settings that we've already set here. If you don't know what I did here, go back and watch the MVP landing um, project or the try Django project. And now we have this import send mail. And then we also want to import the registration models signals. So from registration.signals import, we'll say user activated. Now there's two different ones. There's user registered and user activated. So user registered, uh, registered could be useful for you if you're just marketing. Um, so like if you wanted to have a landing page and that's all you were doing, but you wanted signups, user registered could work there. User activated would mean that they actually used Django admin, activated their email, they went on their email address and activated it. We're gonna use user activated. So now we have to actually create a custom function to handle this signal. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do the signal quite yet, but I'll show you a function that we'll have to make. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define this function. I'm gonna put some more spaces so you can see it a little bit better. Um, we're gonna define this function. I'll say full contact send email. I know it's kind of long, but it's mainly so it's descriptive so I can come back and look at it anytime. Now, again, you might use this in a completely different context, but the way I'm using this is useful for you. Now it's gonna take in a sender, user, request, and possibly other keyword arguments, but let's just put keyword args for uh, that case. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to kind of talk about how I knew all this stuff. Now, custom signals used by Django registration, going back in here, it tells us the arguments. It says it provides the following arguments, sender, user, request. So sender, the class that is used to activate the user is saying what it is, right? It's, the, it's basically what is sending it. So there's a class that would be sending it. So there's a user class. So you guys have seen the user class probably uh, there's all types of classes, but basically this class that's sending it, which should be registration. Um, and then we have our user model. So the actual user that has been activated and then the regular request. So um, those are the ones that we're passing through. Now to actually kind of understand what's going on here, we can know it, what the user is by doing print user, um, we could do print sender. Sorry, I want to have this lowercase, just like the argument says. So user sender. Um, all right, so now if we had those two things, it would show us the class and it would show us the user and then we could even say print request. We could do all that stuff. Um, but what I'm concerned about is not those, all I really want is the user email. So user.email is what I want. So we'll do email equals to user.email. And now we can actually grab all of this contact data so we can use this right here. So let's cut this out and paste this in here. I'm gonna grab this, put that right there. So now this means that we have the user's email because we know for sure that it's going to be an email address or it's gonna have an email address because of the signal that we're gonna be using to actually call this function. Okay, so once you actually implement this and try it live, it's gonna make a lot more sense. And again, you wanna make sure all of your email info is set up correctly. Um, so back into full contact. So from here, now we can just send an email. Now this is gonna give me back um, nothing. It's going to print things. So we need to change the way that this works a little bit. And maybe we don't want item URL. Maybe we just want the full item. So if we look back into the console, um, maybe we just want everything in here. So do we want all of this information? We probably could use all of it in many cases. So maybe we don't even want to iterate through photos or anything. Maybe we want the JSON data and that's all we really want because then we can kind of manipulate that as much as we'd like. So that's what I'll do. I'm gonna get rid of this 
And instead of print, I'll just return JSON data. And this will allow us to actually um, send this data in with our email. So now we return this JSON data. So we'll say data equals to that. So it's returning that JSON data. It's going to return this entire thing here. And there's a few different things that we could do here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing, if the status is 200, then we're going to proceed with sending the data. So if data status equals to 200, right? So if it's 200, then we will send mail some email here, right? So we can do our subject. So full contact data and we could do our message. So what would what would our message want to be? Um, we could do a whole variety of things here. So let's actually just set message equals to data. Um, and then we could do data. And from here, we could say who is sending it. So coding for entrepreneurs at gmail.com. And then who, um, let's just kind of separate these things out. And then who are we sending this to? And again, we're gonna do coding for entrepreneurs at gmail.com. Cool, so that is gonna send our email. And then the last thing I wanna do is fail silently. So this, if we want it to fail silently, meaning we don't want it to raise any errors, we could say true. If we want it to raise errors, so in your testing environment, you might wanna keep this as false. Okay, so now this is all I really have to send, right? This is all the data that I've got. I don't really need to do a whole lot more to this. Um, and it's, it's ready to go. I mean, all we have to do now is connect the signal to this function. And the signal, we already grabbed it. So we'll do that, user activated dot connect, and then the function that we want to actually handle it. The receiver function is what it would be called. And that's full contact send email. And then there you go. So that is how you would connect it. And this is now gonna send you an email with some data and it's gonna give you the JSON data collected from up here and it might take a moment or so to actually do that. Um, so you would of course let it run through and there might be some other errors and stuff like that with this code exactly. But um, the important part here is not so much the signal as it is to see how you might wanna use this full contact information um, because once you have this data, then every time someone signs up, you're gonna see a dictionary like this, so you can actually start looking at all of their different stuff. And of course, how I showed you before would be how you could get specific things for that. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, yeah, let me know if you wanna see me put this in action in any other way. And for now, that is all, so see you next time.